Welcome to my lecture online. Well, it turns out that for each of the six trigonometric functions, we have an equivalent inverse trigonometric function. For example, we have the sine of 30 degrees, which by definition is on a triangle, is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. In this case, it's 5 over 10. That's equal to 1 half. And therefore, if we take the inverse sine of 1 half, we get back the angle of 30 degrees. With the cosine of 30 degrees, the cosine of an angle by definition is the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. In this case, that's 8.66 divided by 10 or 0.866. So if we take the inverse cosine of 0 0.866, we get back the angle of 30 degrees. The tangent of an angle is defined as the ratio of the sine over the cosine. In the case of the angle being 30 degrees, that would be 1 half divided by 0.866, which is equal to 0 0.577. So therefore, if we take the inverse tangent of 0.577, we get back the angle of 30 degrees. The cotangent of an angle, by definition, is equal to the ratio of the cosine divided by the sine. And in the case of an angle of 30 degrees, that is equal to 0.866 divided by 1 half, or 1.732. So if we take the inverse cotangent of 1.732, we get back the angle of 30 degrees. If we have the secant here, by definition, the secant is equal to 1 over the cosine. In the case that the angle is 30 degrees, 1 over the cosine of 30 is 1 over 0.866 or 1.155. So if we take the inverse secant of 1.155, we get back the angle of 30 degrees. And finally, we have the cosecant function. The cosecant is defined as 1 over the sine, and therefore the angle is 30 degrees. The cosecant of 30 degrees is 1 divided by 1 half or equal to 2. So if we take the inverse cosecant of 2, we get back the angle of 30 degrees. Now, of course, it's not just for the angle of 30 degrees. It could be any angle, but at least this gives you a feel of, yes, indeed, for all six trigonometric functions, we have six inverse functions. You plug in a number, you get back the angle. Now, there, of course, are limits, and we have to be careful, because realizing that the sine can only be anywhere a number from 1 to negative 1. So what if we ask someone, hey, what is the inverse sine of 2? Well, since the sine cannot be any bigger than 1 or any smaller than negative 1, there is no such angle that will give you 2 when you take the sine of that. So then when you plug that into the inverse function, that, of course, undefined. There is no such thing as the inverse sine of the number 2. It is true that we can do that for the cosecant or for the secant or for the tangent or cotangent, but we can do it for the sine or the cosine. So there are limits. There are some values that when you plug it in, you, do, you get an undefined value. It doesn't exist. So within limits, and we'll take a look at those limits later, we can take the inverse of any one of those six functions and get an angle back if the number is an appropriate number. And that is how it's done.